Are you still reaching for Benadryl because it feels familiar, even though research shows it can impair your driving more than alcohol? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're looking at why diphenhydramine, the active ingredient in Benadryl, has reached the end of its medical life cycle and what you can do to manage histamine and allergy symptoms without taking on unnecessary risks. I'm Alara Skye. Our goal is to walk you through the evidence in clear terms, outline the specific dangers called out by researchers and medical authorities, and highlight practical steps you can use to reduce symptoms safely. A recent analysis in the World Allergy Organization Journal concluded that diphenhydramine's risks now outweigh its usefulness, even though it was the first FDA-approved antihistamine back in 1946. Millions still use it. About 1.5 million U.S. prescriptions are written annually with far more over-the-counter purchases. Surveys show 62% of adults and 51% of children with seasonal allergies use over-the-counter antihistamines, often because parents assume what worked decades ago is still the safest choice. The safety picture tells a different story. Diphenhydramine crosses your blood-brain barrier easily, causing strong sedation, slower reaction times, memory issues, and poor concentration. Driving studies cited by the authors found worse impairment than alcohol, and the European Union classifies it as do not drive. That's a striking warning for a common drug sitting on most home shelves. The effects also linger. Children metabolize diphenhydramine quickly, with a half-life around four hours, but older adults may experience half-lives up to 18 hours. That means next-day grogginess, confusion, and higher risk for falls. Students aren't immune. Lingering drowsiness translates into poorer attention and academic performance the following day. Beyond sedation, anticholinergic effects block acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter essential for memory, learning, digestion, and muscle movement. You feel that as constipation, urinary retention, dry mouth, and dry eyes. Repeated exposure to first-generation antihistamines like diphenhydramine has been linked to worsening cognitive decline, raising concerns about long-term dementia risk. Children face additional unpredictability. Paradoxical reactions can produce agitation, hyperactivity, or confusion instead of sleepiness. When overdosed, the pendulum swings to profound sedation, coma, or dangerous heart rhythm problems. Most accidental poisonings occur in toddlers age two to four, often requiring hospitalization or critical care, and some cases have been fatal. Medical authorities are moving accordingly. Germany, Sweden, and the Netherlands have restricted diphenhydramine to prescription-only status. In the U.S., the FAA prohibits pilots from using sedating antihistamines while allowing non-sedating options and pediatric guidelines in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. advise against giving diphenhydramine-containing products to young children. The paper recommends moving Benadryl behind the counter so pharmacists can steer you toward safer choices. Misuse is another problem. Social media challenges have driven intentional overdoses, and the FDA has issued warnings after reports of seizures, coma, heart problems, and deaths. Diphenhydramine also shows up in many over-the-counter sleep aids, cough syrups, and cold medicines, creating more opportunities for accidental overuse. Its harms stem from two mechanisms working together. Easy entry into your brain, driving sedation and psychomotor impairment, and anticholinergic activity, which worsens cognitive effects and disrupts digestion, urinary flow, and vision. That dual action explains both the immediate impairment and the longer-term concerns. Even emergency care has shifted. Hospitals once relied on intravenous diphenhydramine for severe allergic reactions, but since 2019 IV ceterizine has been approved and preferred. It provides equal relief with less sedation and shorter ER stays. When acute care teams move away from a drug to reduce harm, it's a strong signal for everyday use. If you still use Benadryl for allergies, colds, or sleep, you're taking on grogginess, memory problems, reduced alertness, and potential long-term cognitive risk. 
safer alternatives exist, and recognizing that allows you to protect your brain, your safety, and your family's well-being. Let's turn to steps that support you without those trade-offs. Start with a short elimination diet to uncover triggers. Remove common culprits for a limited period, then reintroduce one at a time to see what sparks symptoms. The goal isn't permanent avoidance, it's awareness, so you can limit problem foods while maintaining a balanced, nutrient-sufficient diet. Vitamin C is a straightforward tool for histamine balance. Research shows that 300 to 500 milligrams per day enhances histamine degradation, while 2,000 milligrams daily can lower plasma histamine by about 40% within two weeks. You can prioritize food sources, red peppers, citrus, and kiwi, or add a supplement if intake falls short. Quercetin offers longer-term support by stabilizing the cells that release histamine. You'll find it in onions, especially the skins, apples, and berries. For a stronger effect, a supplemental dose of 500 to 1,000 milligrams taken two to four times daily is suggested. If eating onion skins isn't appealing, making a simple broth from them is a practical workaround. Diet quality matters. Processed foods and packaged snacks add stressors that can amplify histamine issues. Shifting toward fresh, whole foods, fruits, vegetables, root vegetables, and unprocessed choices helps restore balance. Leafy greens like broccoli, spinach, and cabbage are rich in kaemphorol, a flavonoid with anti-allergic activity. Daily habits round out your strategy. Prioritize restorative sleep, since poor sleep raises inflammation and can worsen symptoms. Build in regular movement, walking, stretching, or gentle exercise to help regulate immune function. Manage stress proactively because high stress increases histamine release. Even deep breathing and time outdoors can calm your system. Put this together and you get a plan that reduces reliance on sedating antihistamines while strengthening your own histamine regulation. You're not masking symptoms with a drug that clouds your thinking. You're improving resilience with targeted safer steps. Here's your challenge. Today, review your medicine cabinet and the labels on any nighttime or allergy products for diphenhydramine. This week, begin a short elimination trial to identify triggers. Add 300 to 500 milligrams of vitamin C daily, or 2,000 milligrams for two weeks if you need a stronger start. Consider quercetin at 500 to 1,000 milligrams two to four times daily. If symptoms persist, shift one meal per day toward whole foods and set a bedtime routine that protects your sleep. Track your symptoms so you can see what helps you most. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.